What's up, guys? It's Jules. You know why I'm smiling? Good series, great series with San Jose Sharks. Now I have some subscribers who absolutely adore and love San Jose, and it boiled down a lot, in my opinion, to uh, they just they wore out. Uh, you know, they they just they, they didn't have enough of their best players available to play when the time when the time mattered most. So we'll talk about that later. Um, we'll talk about all of that later. Uh, but this is about cross stitch. This is my weekly update cross stitch video, and um, I've got most of my stuff back up here on the wall. And uh, things have been a little crazy, but I got some fair. I got a fair bit of stitching done. A fur, a fur bit of stitching done. Um, the only thing that I didn't get done is I did not. I still have not yet found the dachshund. Wait, let me look real quick. Is it in here? Nope. 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 And I've even cleaned, and I still can't find it. So it's run off somewhere. Um, it's, it's somewhere around here, but it's, it's just run off. But I did get a fair bit done this week, and I ended up, um, it was not, what was the featured thing of the week? What did I do for the featured piece of the week this week? I'm sitting here trying to remember now that I, what did I stitch this weekend? I can't remember. I'm looking at my stuff and I can't remember. Reaper? Is it Reaper? Did I finish Reaper? Man, oh no, honeybee portrait. That's right, it's right here. It's hiding, it's hiding just a little bit, that's why. Yeah, so I worked on that some this week. That was a bit more of the featured project of the week. Man, I just suddenly couldn't remember because I said it was, um, I said it was something else. I said it was Tower of Babel, but Tower of Babel is this week. So I'm all confused. Uh, so it's it's okay. I think I, I, think I got out of order myself, um, but it's crazy. I'm crazy. I, I'm just, I'm still befuddled with the whole idea that the Blues are going to the Stanley Cup Finals. And I am uh, night one of a, uh, well, tomorrow is my first day of five days off in a row. And uh, I'm just kind of, I'm just, my, my head's spinning a little bit. <sighs> Deep breath, everybody. Let's focus on our cross stitch. Keeps us calm, keeps us healthy, keeps us happy. All right. So I neglected to show you guys a couple pieces last week that I should have showed you that I have made some progress on. Um, my uh, text stuff. So my It Is Well project. And I am making making some progress on this. I really didn't do anything this week on it. But what I did last week is I pretty much just came in here, colored some here, filled them here, did this up here. But it's coming along nicely. Little top upper corner. I haven't decided if I'm going to go down or just go across. Um, I don't know. We'll see what strikes my fancy the next time I go to stitch it, but it's a tiny little thing. It's like 32 count, I think. Is it 32 or 28? It might be 32, but it's all good. Um, my Big Toe Designs did that one. Not my actual Big Toe, but my Big Toe Designs did it. And then we're going to show the With Charity For All. With Charity For All, which I did make some progress with it as well. So I moved further down. On this one, I am coming straight down because if I can count properly these spaces all the way through here at one time, then I don't have to worry about it as I go across. So get all the hard part done and then start working my way across. I need to do more of this border. Uh, there's, it's a lot of different colors than, well, not a lot. There's like two other different colors than what this is. So when I go to do this, I'm just gonna pull out those colors, do it here. I think it's down here as well. And um, just do a bunch of those colors all at the same time. Save myself some trouble. But we're getting there. I really like it. I, I'm, one day I am going to have my little Abraham Lincoln spot somewhere in this house where I'll have my two Abraham Lincoln cross-stitch projects, which the other one I haven't... Uh, 298 words or 289 words? The, uh, the Gettysburg Address one. And, uh, and then I still have the puzzle that I haven't put together. And I really want to put some puzzles together. I really want to do that. All right. Let's look at the Reaper. Guys, so excited. I finished the page. I'm so excited. I finished the page and I finished the first row. Finally. My goodness. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, and then I also actually did, oops, so it's over here. And then I did a little bit of work down here. I went ahead and gritted a bit and started stitching on it. So I'm hoping that my experience with the first row will make the next pages go fast because we are literally going to go down and then we're going to come over here and go down 
and then we're gonna cross over, I guess. We're gonna leave the face for last on this baby. Ooh, it's gonna be scary. I have I have good feelings about this one. Good feelings. Well, it's the Reaper, so I don't have great feelings, but I'm excited about the project itself. I have not watched that Ronnie Rowe video yet. Um, I know you guys probably left me all kinds of comments about it. It has been it has been kind of crazy. It's always crazy though around here. Um, but I got did I do any more? I really didn't do any more. I'm not gonna show the Ronnie Rowe because I didn't do any stitching on it this week. We got a we got a focus week coming up, but I'll do more on it here soon. Um, but I gotta look for that video and see. I didn't work on Boba Fett. Boba Fett is still I got it. I finally put it in the hoop. Put it in the hoop. But I need to pull out some purges and and fill some spots in. So I'm not gonna really get into that too much. That's sassy, sassy Boba Fett. It looks like he's being sassy. He's really just holding his little blaster pistol there. Um, what else do we have? All right, this is this project, which is the focus piece in a week. It'll be the focus piece. Um, hmm, maybe it won't. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll see. Uh, let me show you Apothecary Shop. I left it in the uh, hoop because I'm working on it right now. But I did finish. Hmm. You know what? Forget that. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take it out of the hoop. Because I want to really look and see what it looks like. Because, where is it? Oh, it's right here. Little, little tiny Apothecary Shop. And if you can see now, the lettering in the glass is a lot more clear. It's got that hoop mark right over it. But the lettering is coming out a bit more. It kind, and you can kind of tell that it's a reflection, sort of. But anyway, I got back to work on it. And then this is, that's the bottom of the page, is down here. So I've got, I'm almost there. I've got, I'm over halfway through. But we're working on it. We're working on it. It's all good. I'm excited about it. It's good stuff. It's so good. And let's see, since I did that one... Let's see, I did not work on Stormtrooper. Let me find, it's over here. Uh, I was gonna show you baseball. I got some baseball done. Baseball. So I got some more work done on that. I came up here and I filled in a bit more up through here. So the, the ball player right here is showing up a little bit. Yeah, he still looks weird. Like he's, he's kind of contorted in a weird way. So we'll find, I don't have the picture up here. We'll find out if he's, Maybe he's not even watching, because the thing about the baseball picture, the baseball cross stitch, is that, like, the play's happening over here, and half the players are like, uh, what's going on? And, uh, so, so I don't know, maybe it's not going to be perfect. That's all right. That's all right. But anyway, so I did, I did fill in more up here, and then I went in, and I filled in a bit of, like, the back of his arm, the umpire's arm down here, and just filled in a little bit more through here, too. So, just working on it. Just a working on it. It's coming through, though, nicely. It's coming through nicely. This is definitely one of those pieces that every little bit does count because it shows up. It really shows up. And it's going to need the entire first row done before it starts to look nearly as good as a pop carry shop does. Um, both of these are from Cross Stitch Collectibles. I love Cross Stitch Collectibles. They do a wonderful job with the ease of the stitching um, I always do 14 count with these projects because I find it easier to do that way and um, they're just they're just so pretty and the detail is wonderful the designs and the um, the patterns are easy to read so I'm a big fan of them um, rainy water the place is another one of theirs ah! so let's look at that so I got a bit more dune a bit more done and so this time what I did so I came back and I started, I filled in more up through here and then I brought some of the darker stuff down ah. and I did, started working on this little area here, filling this in and filled that in a little bit more there. So some more of the background's coming in. Where'd you go? Oh man, I twisted my back. So, oh, it's hidden, it's hidden. So it's all this right here. So it's this little, this little last cab here. It's just gonna show up. And then when we get that part done, then we'll actually come over and really get some good detail done. I like swallowed a hair or something there. Anyway, let's look at it again. 
But yeah. Love me some 14 count fabric. It's so soft. It's so soft. Okay. Okay. All right. What else we got? Oh, I'll show you. I did work on um, Tower of Babel a little bit, which is also the featured piece. Hmm. All right. Finally got that. That's probably a Fargo hair. I'm going to blame him on it. Got a little bit more done on Tower of Babel this week. So I spent a little bit of time stitching. What did I stitch? I think I stitched all this light color right here and filled in a little bit more up through here, went across. This is actually the, the, the width of the first page. I don't think it's all the way, I think it goes further down, but it's the width all the way across. So luckily there's only like about five or six for most of this page, five or six different um, symbols that are used, but this is blended thread, which I doubt you can really see with this camera. Maybe you can. But it's blended thread, which means it's one piece of floss from one color, one from another color, and you put them together and you stitch them. And that combination of colors makes a kind of a new color. And it's supposed to give like a piece like this just that much more um, detail. And right now you can't really tell because we're just doing this this sky area here, which is one of the reasons why I just went ahead and jumped into it because. It looked like there was a big chunk of it that could be done fairly quick, quickly, quickly in Jules's world. Um, but I just have always loved this picture. I've always thought it was just, like I said, I always wanted it in a, in a ah, jigsaw puzzle. So, um, and that's what this one is too. This one is just a, a lot harder because there's just a lot more color changes in the beginning and probably throughout the whole thing, but it's gorgeous. So I shall work on it. So it shall be good. But anyway, so this is the focus piece of the week. And my goal is to get probably at least three, four hundred stitches minimum. If I can get even more, that would be that would be fantastic. And with me having a fair bit of time off now, I've got a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of other things to do, but it's good. I got I got the time. All right, and then I think this is the last one I'm going to show. Let me see. Did, oh, I have something else down here. What is this? What? Oh, it's honeybee portrait. <laughs> Goofy. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and show. This was honeybee portrait for the week. So I got a fair bit done on it. I've come across to the end. I came all the way across, and this is the top or the end of the first page. So this this particular color, I filled it in all throughout here. So I got a fair bit done this week with this project. I was pretty happy with, with it. And it's definitely one that I think I want to continue stitching on, you know, make it part of the rotation and definitely get it going. But as you can see, this is, this is crazy. It, this is jewels. Crazy equals jewels. Jewels equals crazy. It's the same number of letters. It rhymes. Not done. Nah. <laughs> All right. So let me show you, uh, got, I got more done on Old World Map 2. And so we're getting so close again to the finish of the page. Let me show you that. Check that out, guys. Look how gorgeous that is. And now we're finally getting into a little bit of color, the next part of the design that comes over here. But it is coming along so nicely. And we're getting so close to finishing this page. It's not going to be finished this week. Um, maybe the week after that. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that's, you know, when you're talking about this project, I possibly, if I have all the colors, I could definitely do this. Um, I'm going to make a color list and probably stop by, because I think we're going to be out in about maybe Friday, and uh, I might just stop and get some floss at a Hobby Lobby or a Michael's or something like that um, if I find I need something. So tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, I need to make sure that I am like looking through all my projects and seeing what, you know what colors I need. Um, but I've been organizing better. I finally organized better and I have now like five days of no, nothing to watch on TV, no hockey, no nothing. So, ta -da. so we'll get some progress done. Gosh, this piece is so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. All right. So that's all my cross stitch and update stuff. Um, focus, focus of the week. We talked about it is, uh, Tower of Babel, but we're going to try and work on a bunch of other stuff too. So I just got to, I got to get my mind. I'm not going to start anything new this month. I'm thinking, but I will probably start either Space Traveler 
or the River Thames at some point coming up. I need to finish something else though. I need to finish uh, the With Charity or I need to finish something so I can pull something else into the rotation. So, all right. We can talk about the blues, but I'm going to tell you guys first what happened this week. It snowed. And you probably saw that, right? You snow. It's May 20, the night of May 20th. It snowed. It got cold enough that it snowed. And we're like, well, it's going to snow, but it's not going to stick. And then it stuck. And then it kept snowing. And we woke up in the morning, we had about three inches of snow, and then it was snowing. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, it's Colorado. It's Colorado. And we're in suburban Denver, so it's not like we're in the mountains. It was just crazy. Now, here's the problem. Down where we have our bees, um, they had about almost 15 inches of snow. I am not kidding. It's not in the mountains. It's uh, it's kind of the plains. It's sort of the plains area. Um, it's north. It's north of Colorado. It's just north of Colorado Springs, and Colorado Springs got hit like hard with snow. So we don't know what happened to the bees. Um, we don't know if they're alive or not. We don't know how well they're doing. They were doing absolutely amazing before this happened. So cross your fingers that <laughs> most of them, if not all of them, are okay. I don't know when we're going to find out about it. It's not even, um, it's really not even practical to try to go down there because where we have to get back to where the bees are, I mean, we don't have like a super duper four wheel drive and we've got like a little SUV, but it's not super duper four wheel drive that can climb over every mountain and get stuck in the mud and get itself out. So we're not going to know for a bit. So we're going to have to see um, what happens there. So it's a little, it's a little, a little scary because we've had some, if you guys know, you've been following us, we've had a lot of ups and downs with the bees. And um, it, this, if, if, if the bees were hurt with, if the bees were hit hard, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really tough because it's a lot of work for my husband and stuff keeps happening. So let's cross our fingers, pray, good thoughts, whatever you can do so that those bees are still with us. Um, that's our that's our one wish for now. Are you ready to come over here? You ready to come over here? Okay, let me just... Here it comes. Anyway, I've had this for years. Uh, the blues. Um, I have been a fan of hockey for only about five, six years. Um, I was always mega football fan. I was crazy, crazy football fan. And I had not really, um, you know, I watched hockey with friends, but I didn't really know, I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really understand the game. I didn't know the players and I didn't understand any of the strategy. And so I just wasn't, you know, I wasn't that interested in it, but I had a friend, I have a good friend, um, who we've, I've known him for now easily over a decade. And for years he was, he would try to like, he, we would watch hockey together. He would explain it to me and be like, okay, okay. And I got, I understood that playoff hockey was more intense and it was a lot of fun. And I, and I started, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then I try to start watching it the following year and I'd be like, yeah, you know, and then finally one day I was like, all right, this season, I'm a hockey fan. This season, I'm going to study the game, and I'm going to learn all about it, and it's going to be awesome. So then I'm like, well, i got to pick a team. i got to pick a team. I mean, what what team? I could pick any team I want to. Now, I live in Colorado, so you'd think that I would pick the Colorado Avalanche, but at the time, um, I didn't really like the play style. I didn't like the – they weren't very good at the time, and it, it, the team doesn't have to be good for me to like them. I mean, I liked the Bears for many years when they weren't any good. Um, but I just didn't like the play style. I didn't, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't grabbed by it. I wasn't just, that wasn't what I wanted to see. And so I actually, it was like the beginning of the season and they had like a free hockey package where, um, you could go online, you could watch like all the games. And so I was like, all right, well, you know, this is how I'm going to choose my team. I'm going to watch this game and then I'm going to watch that game and all this other stuff. And about my third or fourth game that I watched was St. Louis versus somebody. And I was watching the game, and I really liked the announcers. I was like, these guys are good. They're nice. Um, they're speaking very positively of the other team. Um, they're not total homers. And um, so I was like, yeah, you know, I could watch these guys. And then all of a sudden I saw 
this guy puck handle in, in the corner and then take this laser beam shot. And I was like, who is that? Who is, who is that guy right there? And it was Vladimir Tarasenko. And I, uh, I was like, huh, well, I really like the way he plays. And I watched the rest of the game and I watched and he was like zipping around and making shots and scoring goals. And I was like, holy cow, like I totally, like that's, that's my team. That's my guy right there. Like that's my, that's my favorite player. I haven't seen everybody, but that's my favorite player. Hold on just a second. Okay. I felt a sneeze coming on. <laughs> um, so, um, so I was like, that's my favorite player. So I ended up watching a lot of games that year. I mean, when I say a lot of games, probably like 30 games of the blues. And I was like, yep, I like him. Yep. I like him. And then like the next year I watched a bit more, got a Jersey. Um, and I went to my first, uh, blues game here in Colorado. And like, I just fell more and more in love with the team and with the, with the um, organization and everything. And it was good. And it just, it, everything was like, what I wanted in a team. And I like other teams. There are other teams that I really like to watch play, but the Blues are my team. And the Blues haven't made a Stanley Cup final since 1970. They've only been a team since 1967, 68. There was a big expansion in the NHL. It was a bunch of teams that came in at the same time. And the Blues were one of them. And uh, anyway, there's a whole thing about it, but uh, I don't want to get into it because I don't know it as well as I know, like, say, football. But um, anyway, so they they made the finals in 1970, but they haven't gone back since. The last time they had a chance, they were beaten by San Jose in the conference uh, finals. And um, so, but this time they make it. And this is a team that I can, I mean, and I'll be honest, this is probably the least amount of games I've watched in any season since I became a fan. There are many reasons for that. One they really stunk in the beginning of the season. I probably watched like the first half dozen games and I was like this is not a good this is not a good team. They they weren't having fun. They weren't they weren't playing hard. They didn't look good at all. And after that, I would catch parts of games and it was just oh, it was so, so hard to watch. And my buddy who's the big hockey fan who knows hockey pretty well kept saying, you know, the coach I told you the coach is not any good. The coach is not any good. He had told me that back when they hired him. And uh, he's like, he's not, he'll take them down. And he did. And thankfully, they they finally came to their senses and they and they fired him. And, and uh, which, I, you know, I'm not ever happy about anybody getting fired. But the thing is, these guys make a lot of money and he's going to get another job. He will. And, uh, but after they fired him, it took him a little bit of time to kind of get everything back to, to rights because it... It probably took at least another month because I, I started watching again after they fired him. And I was like, all right, all right, here we go. And then they still kind of stunk and they still didn't look like they were playing hard. And the thing that always bugged me about St. Louis was that the way they were coached was that they were never very aggressive as a team. Um, they never really went after the other team. They never really was aggressive and kind of um, like just hit the other team because the hockey is hockey is a game of hockey is a violent sport. And there's a lot of like, you know, hitting guys in corners and stuff and checking them and all this other stuff. And, um, and St. Louis was never really like that. And it always, it, that was the only thing that really bugged me was that they weren't aggressive enough. It just, it just seemed like they were too passive. And that, I think that was just the playing style and the way the coaches wanted them to play. And then this new coach came in and he was like, I want you to hit everything that moves. And all of a sudden, like the personality of the team changed and I still wasn't watching it. I, I have so many projects going on at home that I just wasn't watching that. And I didn't start picking it up until right before the playoffs started. I'm like, what is going on? The Blues are making the playoffs? What's going on? Because they were in last place in January. And somehow then they managed to make the playoffs. And now they're in the Stanley Cup final. And they're playing amazing. And every game, I've watched every game. Well, some games, a lot of games I watched with the TV on behind me because I can't I get so freaked out watching it straight on that I I literally like it means so much that I can't I can't sit there and root and watch every single second because it, it it just it kills me when um when they won in the last round when they were playing um Nashville and it was in game was it Nashville no Dallas and it was in game seven 
and they went into double overtime and the first goal would win, I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I fit right into the Blues fans. I, ex- I expect it, I expect it not to happen. I expect them to lose. I, I'm, you know, I, it comes with being a Bears fan too. We're just, yeah, we never win. So, you know, it's just, it's, we're good, but we never win. And so, um, so when they scored in that second overtime and actually won, like at the moment it happened, you know, I screamed and everything, all the dogs jumped and then I burst into tears and I cried like a baby for like 20 minutes. And, uh, and that's why I have a hard time watching the games. Um, but I'm gonna have to watch the Stanley Cup final. Got to watch that. Gonna have my jersey on. Got to watch it. So I, I have more stuff to tell you guys about that. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. We'll talk about it. But anyway, uh, but hockey's almost over. That's the sad part. We've got four games minimum, and then we'll be gone. Hold on. Oh, I sneezed again. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, so it snowed. Blues won. Still fine. I'm getting tickles. I need to take some allergy meds. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I got to do. I think that's all I got to say. I got to go downstairs and stitch tonight. I got five days off in a row, people. Be safe graduations. I know a lot of you guys are uh, doing graduations. Um, be very safe. I got two parties to go to this weekend. Kids graduating high school. Absolutely ridiculous. Makes you feel old when these kids that you knew as like, you know, this big and now they're old enough to drive and going off to college. That's crazy. Anyway, um, I still can't believe they won. I just can't believe they won. Um, it's crazy. All right, I'm going to go stitch. I need to find myself, if anybody finds a good St. Louis blues pattern out there, because I, the, I don't like the old school colors, the light blue. Um, I don't, oh, I didn't even show you my shirt. If I can stand up. Ugh. The best days are spent cross-stitching. I've had this one for a while. But anyway, if anybody could find me a, an old vintage vintage hockey or old St. Louis Blues cross-stitch, I'd be much obliged. Um, gosh, I still don't have the sign-up so many days since my last pattern. <sighs> I, got, I just, shiny object, guys. And I, you know what? I'm going to blame it on World of Warcraft. I've been playing WoW. A lot lately. A stitch and a play. And I, I've been uh, playing while I've been listening to the games a lot. Because it soothes me. So hopefully it'll be something that I will soon get tired of. And get back into stitching full time. I'm getting still getting a lot of stitching done. Just not as much as I was before. But my stitchy bug has, has begun to return. And I definitely was having a lot more... Uh, fun craziness not fun it's not like I don't have fun stitching it's just that I'm just like meh 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 but anyway I think this video has been long enough don't you think so don't you think so but is there any snow still out there nope I think all the snow finally melted so now that it's Memorial Day weekend you can't plant flowers here before Memorial Day weekend they they all they say that you're not supposed to do it before Mother's Day weekend but I would say also before Mother's Day weekend, just extend it out a little bit further. There are a lot of tree branches broken around here. There are a lot of dead flowers that were planted after Mother's Day. And uh, 